So in the last class, uh, we are looking at uh, sampling and uh, this application of the sampling uh, theorem. Okay, so uh, uh, the sampling uh, we saw two aspects. Like one is uh, the the sampling theorem itself, and other one is uh, about uh, the reconstruction. Okay. So ideal reconstruction will be Shannon reconstruction and then this uh, sampling theorem itself. Okay, that the signal needs to be sampled at least twice uh, its frequency contents to get uh, get it to the final uh, you know, uh, form, which uh, digital form which is uh, representing the the original signal content. Mm -hmm. If it is not done, then the signal contents are all lost. Ideally, we will need about uh, three to four times the the sampling frequency to really represent in the in the in the practical case uh, scenario. Mm -hmm. So uh, now we we began with uh, uh, you know further um, to this we began with. Um, the, the digitization of the system. So, what it means is when you sample a system, you represent them as these kind of dot samples that are point sample points that are represented here. Let me get the mouse right. And uh, these samples are held constant over the sampling period, which is uh, T. Now, if this uh, kind of uh, output or uh, input goes to the actuator or your plant, how the plant behaves is 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 what we discussed in the uh, in the digitization. That is what will happen when the system is digitized, or like you know, if you want to mathematically represent this continuous system, which is like getting this kind of a uh, input, which is steppy kind of a uh, form of input this kind of a steppy form with this value held constant over the time interval then uh, what is its effect on the, on the system huh? that is what we, we started studying okay and to that effect we we saw that like you know, for any continuous uh, domain system this is a solution of a system this is a system of the kind x dot is equal to ax plus bu and uh, this is solution Okay, the solution has two, two parts. One is like a homogeneous integral, a homogeneous solution, and other is a particular integral part. Okay, now uh, we apply this uh, solution between the two time instances where uh, we start off with like time instance k, k times capital T, capital T is the sampling time, and we predict the state at k plus 1 times T. Okay, so within this time, the system would progress within this time interval um, k plus one t to k uh, k t to k plus one t, which is the time interval of capital T, and um, there we will uh, will get this uh, contribution of the homogeneous part of the solution, and then this is particular integral part of the solution. Now notice here, like we integrate not from zero to t. But now, this, since we are starting at kt, this will be kt to k plus 1t, and uh, this uh, zero state here is, is x of kt. And uh, similarly, you will find that this final time is, is k plus 1t, and then tau remains as it is because uh, it is an integral variable, and then uh, all these uh, terms remain the same. And then uh, we, we shift the, the time to this time variable or tau variable uh, defined in, in some different way, shifted way and then we, we simplify these to get, uh, get it to this final form. So x of k plus 1 now is uh, e to the power a t, okay, a is the system matrix for the original uh, analog system, x dot is equal to x plus b u kind of a system and um, t is, capital T is your sampling time. Okay. Uh, x of t k, I mean the e to the power a t times x of k and then integral um, 0 to t uh, e to the power a s b times d s. Hmm. 
so this is how uh, you you get these two uh, matrices which are independent of uh, state okay there is no x coming in this uh, at all so these are like system characteristics matrices then okay this characteristics will depend upon matrix a and the sampling time that you have used uh, the sampling time t okay uh, so with this uh, we have now uh, the, the system coming in this form x of k plus 1 is equal to phi of t x of k plus psi of u of k okay psi times u of k okay this phi is this e to the power at matrix and psi is integral of e to the power a s d s uh, b d s okay so as or like b is not a function of s so we can come out of the integral and this is integral of uh, this uh, this matrix mm, uh, definite integral 0 to t and uh, multiply with the vector b mm, which is a which is a system input vector and y of k is equal to x c times x of k that remains as this and now one can iterate this further like say x of uh, say we start at same state k0 then k0 plus 1 x of k0 plus 1 will be x uh, phi x k 0 plus psi u k 0 then x of k 0 plus 2 will be similar way and we substitute for phi of x uh, x of k 0 plus 1 here and like you get this uh, again like you know this kind of a function here and you collect these terms in general for starting from k 0 ok so k 0 is equal to 0 to k, k so this is will become some kind of a summation now you see this power here which is phi square coming here or like you know k 0 plus 2 kind of a uh, thing and that's how like you know, this will become now uh, you, you just uh, see this carefully uh, for each term uh, there will be now higher and higher powers that will be coming up um, uh, for for phi and and psi here ok so so you can see this phi square x of k0 and phi times psi u of k0 is coming ok and if you have this k0 state the, 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 the initial kind of a state of a system to be zero, okay. So we consider many times for uh, for a transfer function also zero initial conditions. Then, like you no, know, this will be just uh, in terms of u. Okay. So this this expression assumes that there is a there is a zero initial condition. Okay. Otherwise, this term phi uh, phi raised to k minus one times x of k zero would would be additional term that will be coming here. Okay. So um, now let's uh, what is the significance of this is that like we can get a state x x of k given u and and this is matrices alone okay so this matri matrix phi and psi are known then based on that those matrices we can get uh, you know the response of the system to any of any input in general any input u okay now all the, all of this is now happening in the in the digital domain form okay so we are getting this kind of a discrete values of uh, the, the, the state vector at um, every time instance or, or like you know this uh, sampling time uh, index which is k and, uh, yeah so 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 this is how the the um, system response will will come out and if you see this carefully this is similar to what we have as a convolution in the in the discrete domain in the continuous domain so this is a convolution in the discrete domain similar to convolution in the in the continuous domain uh, so uh, so this this part here if you see has uh, k minus j uh, kind of a or k minus 1 minus j kind of a form and this is a j form okay so j and k minus j kind of a forms are there okay so uh, with this one can predict what is this um, function with which input is, is convolved to, to, to get your uh, final output. Mm -hmm. so, so the same way we have convolution in the 
in the analog domain, you can see the convolution in the discrete domain, and then then the function that is convolved with becomes like a impulse response of a of that system. So uh, in in the discrete case, it is called a pulse transfer function. Okay. Or pulse response function, not transfer function. Pulse response function. Okay. So if you see this in the in a convolution kind of a way, you can see that c times uh, phi is to let's say our new variable l minus one uh, psi. Okay. This function. Okay. Is 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 pulse response function. Okay. So so this is like a input um, u u of j convolved with h of l. Which is impulse or pulse response function, um, then you get get your output y of t. Okay, there's one kind of a concept here. Now, uh, further to that, now we we seek now a way to get some kind of a transfer function in the digital domain. Now, to get that, we need to like define some 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 new quantities. Okay, so we'll come to that. So uh, to to get our transfer function, so we we define this operator Q, okay, which is called pulse transfer operator, okay, in such a way that when the Q operates on some some x of k, then uh, it shifts uh, the the state by one sampling instance, okay. So Q square x of k will be x of k plus two, like that, okay. So Q is is like some kind of operator which we have defined now to to get some kind of a forms for for the for the transfer function, and we get now the way we we get uh, things in in the in the continuous domain in terms of the variable s, which is a Laplace variable Laplace domain variable s. We we now get this uh, you know equations or like the the transfer functions in the in this operator, okay, in, in the in the operator variable okay, Q. Okay, so so if you now see again our previous uh, system, okay, uh, we had x of k plus one is equal to this was our derived equation previously. Okay, if you see these two steps back, we had this equation x of k plus one is equal to phi of t x of k psi of u k. Okay. So this equation now can be written in the form of this operator. Okay, so q times x of k will be equal to uh, all these things. So uh, if you combine terms with x uh, like x of k together, then uh, q i minus phi, okay, uh, times x of k will be equal to psi of u k, and then this inverse times like you, know, you get this. Now uh, we know the output is y of k. Uh, is equal to c times x of k. Okay, so you substitute for this x of k here, and you get this as the output. So now this becomes like input-output relationship. Okay, and uh, if we define the the transfer function uh, as a ratio of y of k over u of k, then uh, what we get on this side here is a uh, is a transfer function. Okay, in terms of this new operator q. Hmm? So, so this is a this is a transfer function of a of a digital domain system. Mm -hmm. So this is how we start out start getting now uh, the the similar kind of analogies which we have in the uh, similar to what we have in the um, uh, continuous domain. Okay, so. So one can see that look uh, how we we suppose we have the system x dot is equal to x plus p u and uh, y is equal to c x. From there we can get to this kind of a transfer function h of q, uh, basically using uh, phi which is equal to e to the power a t, where t is a transfer function and where t is a uh, sampling time and uh, psi is like integral of uh, e to the power phi. Uh, S, you know, a. so it, that's the integral of this uh, this term. Okay, so this a times b, like you know, that b matrix is coming here, and uh, a matrix is coming here, and c matrix is here, like that. We have used all these three a, b, c matrices to get to the um, final transfer function. Okay, uh, in the digital domain. 
Okay, so this is how uh, we, we proceed to get a transfer function in the uh, digital domain. And this transfer function can then have uh, definitions of codes and zeros and all those uh, you know, stability conditions uh, will, will come up. Okay, so we will not get into those details uh, right now. We, what we will fo focus on is now how do we use this as uh, in the in the in in the application of, of filters. Okay. Um, so this is one of the ways one can see that the the continuous domain system can be converted into a digital domain system. Okay. And uh, the, the issue remains like okay, how do we implement such a such a system? Or suppose we want if we have defined now. Say last class we saw that okay, filter is nothing but uh, some kind of a transfer function through which like when the input is passed, then some output will be produced, which is uh, can be seen as a filtered output. So similar way we have this digital domain transfer function. We pass some input to this function, and then like you know, this may act as a filter also. Okay. So so you can define this system to be a filter. Like you know x x dot is equal to x plus bu can be your filter, which is have uh, some certain kind of a form of matrix A and B and, and one can now look at this as uh, as a as a filter transfer function. Okay, so so we'll see how, how this can be used in in actual implementation of a filter. We mm. we'll, we'll look at that. Um, so so we need to kind of have a sense of this uh, shift operator clear here. Okay. Shift operator here and like maybe this is same kind of a operation that happens with the with the definition of Z transforms. Okay, so we'll we'll not get into too much of a DZ transform domain uh, things. Uh, I mean, there is formal definition, mathematical definition of Z transform, and uh, there are some certain conditions under which the system can be transformed from um, you know the the discrete kind of a form to Z Z domain. Okay. Uh, and and get like, like a lot of these uh, details of like you know, the digital domain system will appear there also. Uh, so so <laughs> this is this using pulse transfer function pulse transfer operator is one way of converting system from uh, continuous domain to digital domain. And G transforms will be other way to do that. Okay, there are some subtle differences. Uh, although like. You know this property is same for both the operators. There are certain differences between the two, uh, which we will not get into uh, right now. Okay, uh, for practical purposes, they are not really, really so important. Okay, so uh, so as far as possible, we will prefer to kind of use the system with uh, with this kind of a pulse transfer operator because it has some kind of a you know good um, physical sense of uh, what is happening in actual practice. Okay, that is uh, getting reflected in this uh, in a very neat way. Okay, which may not happen with the with the Z transforms. Okay, so um, this is one one part that is uh, what we we will uh, we observe here, and um, we we from here we'll just move on to some some filters uh, and its implementation. Okay. So this is a transfer function, and then uh, we will skip this part of the Z transforms, and we will go to the to the filters eventually. Okay, so uh, you can these are like you no know, mainly mathematical kind of definitions, and it it gives give some kind of properties which are similar to to cube uh, operator properties. Okay, but not exactly the same. Okay, so that's so that's what we will we will we'll see. Okay, um, now. Uh, we we get to the some some kind of a fundamentals of a filter. So uh, the the system to transform from uh, one domain to other domain. Okay. So so now we are using this Z as a, as similar to like you know Q operator. Um, uh, we use this some, something called bilinear transformation. Okay. Where it pops up from is basically um, um, if you see. The the eigenvalues of uh, hmm. so so uh, you know this is uh, like uh, coming from how the poles get mapped. Okay, 
So the bilinear, uh, this is the, we'll, we'll see what is this bilinear transformation will come to that in a, in a, in a, in a while. But uh, what can see now that there are these different domains that you started off with this differential equation, then you convert it into state space form, uh, or you can convert it into transfer function, or you can have a, a discrete domain transfer function with a shift operator Q, or you can have discrete domain transfer function with uh, Z transforms, or like you know using these bilinear transforms. Okay, so so uh, see you can either use this discrete domain transfer function with uh, with a shift operator Q, or like you know using this bilinear transform. These are the two ways. Uh, like you know we can. Um, convert the S domain system to, to Z domain okay, or to, to discrete domain mm -hmm. and uh, so discrete domain, uh, discrete time relationship between YK and UK would be uh, that what we derived for with the shift operator okay. So there are different different kinds of domains of uh, operation that we can see here. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about uh, a simplified way of, of doing the thing with these, uh, you know, um, the bilinear transform uh, way of doing things. Where these bilinear transform come from? Huh? So let's go back to our basic uh, derivation of uh, this um, system. Hmm. So, so the system uh, in the in the uh, discrete domain is x of k plus one is equal to phi of t x of k and uh, psi of u of k. Okay. Now, uh, look, is phi and psi are some kind of a constant matrices. Now, uh, if you if you see in a um, way similar to what we have in the um, continuous domain, this is like uh, x dot is equal to a x plus b u okay? and uh, we know that a matrix uh, um, has uh, is a very special matrix for the system because the eigenvalues of a would be the poles of a system. Hmm? So similarly in this case eigenvalues of this phi matrix are going to the poles or of a discrete domain system. Okay, and this phi matrix is nothing but e to the power a t. Okay, so eigenvalues of um, uh, phi or the poles of the system hmm, uh, are going to get mapped to e to the power pole times t. You see that e to the power. So, so see if I say eigenvalues of phi will be equal to eigenvalue of e to the power a t. And if I know eigenvalues of a, then like you no, know, it will be simply uh, e to the power eigenvalue of a times t. Okay. So the poles get mapped. So so this is nothing but eigenvalue of a is nothing but a pole. Okay. So uh, e to the power pole times t is going to be the new pole for this domain system. Okay. So pole for a discrete domain system is nothing but e to the power pole for a uh, continuous domain system times like sampling time t. Okay, so that is a basic uh, nature here. Okay, so with this uh, you can see that e to the power so so if I use s as a variable for the pole, then e to the power s t is is my pole for. Um, discrete domain system ok so this uh, is like you know, termed as z here or q here ok so z is equal to e to the power s t ok and now if we simplify this in terms of uh, its, uh, its, uh, its exponential uh, in terms of polynomial in the series expansion you get uh, you know uh, some first and second order terms based on that some approximation of the uh, first order terms one can now get uh, this uh, relationship, okay, which is termed as bilinear transforms. Okay, s is equal to uh, two or t. This this comes from from that. Okay, so I leave it to you to derive that from from that. So this is this has its genesis at uh, a relationship z is equal to um, e to the power s times capital T. Okay. So 
the, the approximation to this uh, relationship is 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 uh, get gotten into uh, for polynomial first order terms collecting all the first order terms for the polynomial expansion we get this relationship okay so i would leave it to you to to derive this uh, relation mm -hmm. okay uh, so now we'll see how do you use this relation for uh, then uh, implementation of filter or depth is design of filters mm -hmm. that is what is our whole whole uh, um, point of discussion so so we are doing this for finally be able to implement filter in the in the discrete domain or in our microcontroller mm -hmm. now uh, so so uh, so these are like you know different ways to to transform the system into one form to other form so you can look at this uh, say for example you want to transform system uh, uh, to uh, discrete domain what can you use backward difference formula or forward difference formula or like you can take a transfer function of that system and so this is backward and forward different formula, formula will be applicable to the, um, uh, the the differential equation okay so the differential equation operator d by dx will be approximated with this or d by dt will be appropriate approximated with backward or forward difference formula and you can get uh, the discrete version of the system the, or you can use the the state space representation um, uh, and do it by shift operator way okay or you can use uh, transfer function representation and uh, s you replace that s by this this value here okay in terms of uh, z and you get like you know the z domain or th uh, this can be also q domain okay so both are very similar right now we'll start using the terminology in the, uh, of a z domain okay so um, for uh, for now we'll not make much of a distinction between q and c both are similar kind of operators that we will consider okay um, then these are the questions about mapping of the poles and zeros uh how will this uh, so these are kind of questions one can think about ponder over and answer we are not going to kind of get to them uh, right now so we will see right now like no main focus is is for the filter mm -hmm. uh so this is so once we have a, a original system in s domain any system in s domain we we we, sh we are able to transfer it into a discrete domain by by using these different different kinds of transformations okay that is what is a is a main crux here to to you like, know uh, consider hmm. uh, once we have this transformation available then how then it is easy to implement in a in a in a microcontroller how we will see that in a minute okay uh, so so this is what we are talking about mapping of uh, mapping from s plane to z plane okay we so we we saw that in terms of poles it should it is like you no know, z is equal to e to the power a e to the power s into t okay that is what uh, is a mapping from s to z plane mm -hmm. now um, filter we 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 need uh, in mechanical system for uh, filtering the noise in the system okay and uh, um, to avoid the the performance degradation when we when this noise goes into the feedback huh? then uh, so typically filters are used to remove the high frequency noise and uh, the sources of noise you can have um, electromagnetic radiation coming from the fan tube lights and other kind of uh, elements which are around the mechanical system or your motor itself will be generating a lot of electromagnetic signals which will act as a noise for your sensors okay um then um, we have uh, um, so so um, we have some operations that are going on in the uh, in the time domain okay so what will happen with those are operations in the uh, frequency domain is is another thing that we need to uh look at why uh, because the filters have a role to play there also okay 
what role the filter have to play? Say, where we do this kind of operation differentiation is where, like, say, for example, for your motor, okay, if you want to implement PD control, what you do, you take a, a value of your encoder and you use some kind of a difference formula, or you are differentiating that uh, numerically the encoder values and getting your uh, speed, okay. So this numerical differentiation has some bearing on the on the noise. Okay, so so uh, it's very important to see what is happening uh, with this differentiation operation in the frequency domain. Mm -hmm. um, so so uh, if you see uh, differentiation operation like you know, d by d. Uh, t of a signal f of t, okay. If it is uh, done, then uh, Laplace transform of uh, this uh, d by dt of f will be simply like s into uh, Laplace transform of the f, right? So, um, so, so Laplace domain uh, gives you this kind of a like you no know, multiplication of. Um, uh, the original uh, Laplace transform by S when you differentiate a particular function. Hmm. Now, uh, if you replace this S by J omega, okay, so to kind of typically if you know, if you remember, you have uh, S is equal to J omega we use for getting a board plot of a system or getting a frequency domain response of a system. Okay, so uh, when you use S is equal to J omega, then uh, at that time, like you know, what happens is uh, differentiation. If you see in terms of uh, when s is equal to j omega, it's just simply multiplication by j omega to the original uh, f of j omega. So f of j omega, or capital F of j omega, is our nothing but our um, signal content. Okay. So if the signal content is f of j omega, then uh, the signal content for the differentiated version of the signal okay, would be j omega times f of j omega magnitude of entire of this thing. Okay, so uh, one can see very easily if your signal is a sin omega t, if you take a differentiation of this with respect to time t, then it becomes a omega cos of omega t. Okay. So, so you can see that when you differentiate the the signal, the frequency content, okay, uh, the, the uh, frequency content would change, and and it would change in, in a way that you know it's whatever original frequency content, it, it is getting multiplied by omega, okay. So, uh, so this is this of course is in the time domain. Okay, uh, this is time domain signal you can see here. Uh, we are just observing this time domain signal to see what is happening in the frequency domain. Okay, it's not we actually if you want to kind of see this. Ideally, we need to take a take a, a, a Laplace transform or Fourier transform of of this signal to say that okay, oh look, the Fourier transform of this signal is indeed getting multiplied by omega to get a Fourier transform of this signal. Uh, okay, so when, the, when it is differentiated, uh, the Fourier transforms get get multiplied by by omega. Okay, so uh, so what what it means is graphically, one can say that okay, if you have a signal here, okay, and you are using this differential operation here, so you differentiate and get a signal dy by dt here, and let's say this this operation is is uh, some kind of a continuous domain ideal, I mean, you know, differentiation that is happening. We are not really doing this approximation by using forward or backward difference formula or anything like that. I'm just saying, okay, this is like a like a full, uh, you know, uh, differentiation. Then uh, this differentiation operation would be this this g, g of s will be s here. So this is like a transform that is happening y of s coming here, multi getting multiplied by s and then we are getting s times y of s as, as you know, um, uh, Laplace domain function whose uh, Laplace inverse will be dy by dt. Okay, so in the Laplace domain or in the frequency domain, this is simply getting multiplied by omega. Okay, 
this omega plotted on the omega axis will be like a 45 degree line here. Okay, so so uh, this is uh, what will happen to this signal now is is when it passes through this filter is 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 can be seen here that this signal will become zero here. It is it has value one. It was there. It that value when multiplied by this signal will become zero, and then uh, at uh, omega zero there will be uh, the signal. Be, this signal has zero value, and that, you know, this has some finite value, but that will become zero, and then this is some kind of a response that we we'll get. Okay, so this is a differentiated version of a signal. Now. Uh, so this is what uh, the differentiation operation does to the to the signal, original signal. Okay, so um, one can see that if the original signal has some noise content now, okay, it has some. Uh, typically, the signals will have a noise at a high frequency, okay, and uh, when you pass it now to the differentiation kind of operation, okay, these are even if it's the ideal differentiation, okay. You will have, you can find that okay. Now, this noise is at say omega n frequency, uh, which is farther away from omega 0, typically higher frequency noise. Higher the frequency, that, that much is a, is an amplification for the noise that is happening here. Okay, so the noise in this signal will get amplified here. Okay, that is what is a, is a main, uh, you know effect of uh, operation of differentiation on the signal mm. and uh, because of this uh, we need now filter to get, to get rid of these uh, extra peaks otherwise your uh, feedback differentiated feedback is going to be noisy in the pd control especially this is important because then the d uh, derivative part will will get noisy and you will not be able to use very high gains in the derivative operation okay so, uh, so this is how, like, you know, then you will start off. We uh, do this differentiation operation, and then you, you use a low pass filter to filter out this noise, and and you get uh, like you know the filter version of a, a differentiated signal. Okay. So this is how, like, you one can see what is happening uh, in the frequency domain, and we use uh, the filters appropriately to to do the job that like you know, we want to. Reduce the noise in the, in the differentiation operation. So, so sources of noise are not only like you know whatever ambient sources, but but your mathematical operations also can induce uh, like you know enhance the noise that is already there in the in the, in the signal. Okay. So we have not yet talked about like uh, see this is ideal differentiation, but if you have a forward difference or backward difference, there is some kind of a different kind of a form that will happen here which which you are not getting worried about for now okay so we just leave with this uh, like no idea that okay we are doing like no uh, continuous domain differentiation and uh, we, we, we work with that kind of continuous domain system uh, and then say that okay this is more or less similar to what will happen uh, if the sampling time is fairly uh, appropriate and um, we are doing it in a discrete way. Okay. Uh, so, so the filter, if you see here, is is some kind of a transfer function, which has some kind of a frequency response or board plot, and then the the, the, the signal passes through that, and it it produces the output. Okay. That is a very simple concept of filter. So you, you see, this is like a first order filter here. Okay. So it has uh, some kind of a uh, cutoff frequency beyond which, like you know, it has this tapering of uh, uh, some slope will happen here. You can have second order filter or like you know, larger order filters will have like you know this is a sharper and sharper cutoff will happen here. Instead of this going in a in a in a gradual slope kind of a fashion, it will go like you know down fast. Okay, that will be a higher order filter. Uh, so when we have to implement this uh, filter. In the yeah, so we'll, we'll we'll see how this filter can be implemented. So this is one of the ways of implementing filter is like you know, this moving average uh, kind of a filter. Okay. Um, so moving average filter will have a formula. Uh, so so what you do is like you you will uh, at a given point you will consider uh, previous two two or three or more samples 
and uh, take an average of all these samples and keep it at that uh, value. Okay. And uh, you need to quickly update the previous values of the sample. And we have seen that that update can be done by using this uh, kind of a way. So the one previous value will be current value. Then second previous value will be previous current value. Like that we can go ahead and do the updates. Okay. These are the updates that we have seen uh, when we implement like you know, derivative control. We need to do this kind of updation of the previous value so that uh, we are ready for the next uh, uh, sampling instance uh, derivation uh, derivative to be uh, computed in the next sampling instance. Okay, um, so we will we'll not worry about this frequency response of such a filter, but like you know, one of the ways of uh, implementing filter is like you know, moving average kind of a filter. And if given a transfer function, then uh, one can uh, use um, this. Uh, one can use this. Suppose this uh, transfer function is given uh, one over tau s plus one kind of a transfer function. Then one can use uh, s is equal to uh, this bilinear transform formula and get that as a as a discrete domain transfer function. And uh, using a discrete domain transfer function. You, you you can transfer it to into the uh, discrete domain time function okay mm, uh, time equations okay so how do we do that uh, they, that is be done by using this uh, shift operator so we will stop for here for now and um, um, uh, i think this this some of these concepts although you may find that they are kind of a little bit of a um, tough to grasp immediately you will need to ponder over, you may need to go back and forth over the slides and, and, and listen carefully, then you will be able to grasp these concepts. I, I understand that these are like too much of a, too, too many kind of a different concepts are, are back here together, but um, they are like done in a in manner to kind of see that you, you are able to kind of develop filters yourself or implement filters yourself. But these are the ideas that you will typically need for the for the for you know, defined implementation of a of a given mechatronic system. Okay, because many times you will be bothered by the noise in your sensors, and uh, when you further do this differentiation operation, your noise will further increase, and then you you will get further okay what to do in such kind of a scenario, how to kind of handle that time. These 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 concepts are going to be very very useful. Okay.